Okay, well, we might as well go ahead and um, get started. So um, first off, thank you everyone for responding so quickly to the poll and being willing to just meet on kind of short notice. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to look over Cinnamon Park's application. Um, they had, I had talked with them in the spring about potentially applying for additional funding. Um, but then when the fourth quarter cycle opened in October, they decided that they were, they didn't need to apply for more funding. But then between then when the application cycle closed and just, um, early December, things changed for them where they had come and asked whether they would be able to apply for additional funding um, due to unexpected increases in um, construction costs and um, a decrease in what they were expecting to get um, on their tax credits. So they now have a, a request in for 250,000, which equals, which is the same amount that they were approved for in um, 2019. So it would be, a total city contribution of 500,000 um, for their for their Cinnamon Park um, project. So I didn't know if anyone had questions or comments or if you guys wanted to jump into your discussion. Sandy. My question is, um, do we think that we're gonna encounter or be hearing from other applicants requesting additional funds because they're finding a delay and there is uh, increased costs in what they had initially anticipated. I mean, I, I'm surprised you've given them all these chances and then, uh, you know, you're hearing now from them and mm -hmm. I just wondered. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard from any other okay. applicants. Um, I don't, I would have to think, I think it's, um, Habitat would be the other project that has, or other applicant that has projects that have been awarded funding that haven't started construction. Um, but I haven't heard anything from them that they have any concerns about their costs. Um, they're not obviously getting tax credits, so they don't have to worry about any change in that. Um, it's the tax credit that is the significant change. Is that my understanding? That is part of it. And then they also had um, increase in construction, especially lumber due to, um, she said, due to the fires. Fires, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the whole project look like, looks like it's up 600,000 in mm -hmm. cost, <clears throat> a lot of lumber. Yeah, and they did um, go ahead and, you know, they, they've asked all of their other funders to so mm -hmm. for additional funding so they're not just relying on um yes. on on the city to fill to fill that gap um, yeah I, I just looked at the side by side and it looks like they they i mean they've been i don't know how creative it is at the end of the day because i don't know what it takes to get these but you know they've increased their sources um different and it, like three different sources and um, and obviously tax credit is down. Anyway, um, so so it looks like they've done some work on that mm -hmm. um, to try and not put all of it on us or the city of Longmont. Kathy, was that you that just joined? Someone joined and it doesn't show their name. <laughs> so I didn't know who that was. <laughs> It's by phone. Yeah, it's by phone. So, uh, Molly, can you hear me? This is Lori Walker. Hi, Lori. Yes. I don't know why my picture's not showing, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, the. it looks like the tax credit equity amount that they, they originally were anticipating of 95 cents has gone down to 89 cents. Are you guys seeing that with other projects? I mean, that's, that's a significant decrease. Um, the only other recent tax credit project that I have worked on was Longmont Family Apartments. And they I think they were at 4% and they, I don't think, I don't know what they, um, what they ended up getting. I don't think, he never mentioned anything about it being an 
a decrease that would make an issue with their um with their project yeah so, that's um, it's interesting that that it would decrease that much mm -hmm. i think their consultant also expressed surprise at that um and so I don't, she said it was due and uncertainty in the market um is how she how she explained that difference huh okay so i have a question um you know on the original request we didn't give them the full request because of the development fee reductions weren't factored in is that still an issue this time around as well no, so they they now have the fee waivers or fee reductions factored in to their budget. Okay, so, okay, so everything is correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Yep. So I have a question. Um, I guess I didn't catch it, but in their application, it talks about that they have reconfigured their units to include one more one bedroom and taken out the commercial kitchen, which they originally had planned to support. And then it said a market study will be redone once the PUD has been approved for extension. And the larger property was originally designed to plan to have three two-story structures when they first opened. How many structures are they planning on having now? So I think it. I think <laughs> part of the application that we got, she just copied over from the old application, so that didn't get updated. Oh. So there's, it's when we, when they applied back in um, 2019, they talked about getting rid of the commercial kitchen uh -huh. and all of that. I believe it's just one structure. Well, that that's what I remembered that we just had one building, and then yeah. I'm thinking three. Where did? Yeah. Where did, so I okay. think there's some things that are when I was reviewing the application. I think some things just were copied over. Okay. Okay. Thank from you. The old application. Thank you. Okay. So can somebody remind me on the original 250 we gave, is that a loan? Are, are we expecting them to pay that back? Yeah, so the loan terms are at 0% and pay back over 40 years. Okay. And they've said that the same terms, if they were to be approved for this additional funding would work for them. Okay. Okay. And it's to continue to be permanently supporting at least over for the next 40 years. Permanently affordable? Uh-huh. Yes. Um, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Affordable, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so then my, my, my question that I have almost every time we meet is, what's the bank that we have? Like, yeah. what's the bigger picture of, yeah. of what, what the funding is and I get confused on what buckets what and, and kind of how much of a hit that 250 makes on what is available for 2021. So Kathy said, um, and this is not, um, this is sort of rough estimates, but yeah. definitely. Got it. So that, um, Going into 2021, we have about 300,000 in CDBG funds that would be available, and then 540,000 in affordable housing. Um, okay. that, that amount, I believe that 540 does not take into consideration this request. So that re so this 250 would come out of okay. that amount. Okay, so that looks like eight four eight eight hundred and fifty k for the year, mm -hmm. and and what they're what we're considering right now is almost a little bit less than a third of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, but does the three hundred and fifty thousand five years Costco affordable housing have to come out of that eight hundred and fifty two? Also, I believe that we're supposed to be paying for the next five years? <clears throat> that I am not sure. So if it does, right there is $600,000. Mm -hmm. And do you have any idea if there are gonna be other projects 
coming through 2021. I mean, that's $200,000. That's not very much money. Right. Um, I, <clears throat> I have not talked to anyone. Um, I don't know if elements, if Kathy has talked more with element, which is um, moving forward with the suites uh -huh. property. Um, what their timeline is and whether they would be coming in. I know that they were going to try and go in for, I believe, 9% tax credits this year, I think. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Besides. Is that stuff, um, the tax credit due like in February, March? It seems like it's the same cycle yeah. every year. Yes. So I think it's due. I think the 9% is due in um, February. Okay. I believe it's Lori Walker again. I believe I saw that they have submitted an application. Okay. okay. To Chapa, sorry. Oh, good. Thank you. Well, in the so, past, have we not kind of borrowed money to pay? Rob from Peter to pay Paul. I mean, it seemed like in 2020, we were looking at some of these pockets of money um, out of this year, or am I a, a year off? We had talked about with um, 518 Kaufman, which is the Boulder County Housing Authority's new project, and they applied for our home funding. And that had a lot to do with it was sort of back and forth with Boulder about what had been awarded and where projects were in the pipeline um, as to what year of funding they got. Mm -hmm. um, also the same with um, Habitat when they applied for the home Chodo funds for their Mountain Brook project. Yeah. Um, that was also sort of having to look at where projects were in terms of who could take the funding first. Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay. So, yeah, sometimes that, that does happen. Yeah, thank you. I have a quick question. Can you hear me? Yes. I, I was just curious if anybody uh, on the deferred developer fee, I see about 237 being deferred. That's up a little bit from their prior fine. Um, does that seem light for the total amount of developer fee on the project? I, I think I usually see, you know, closer to 50, 40 or 50 percent of that fee. Good question. Um, Lori. Maybe Lori, if you have any thoughts. Yeah. Um, it just depends on what can be paid back within the 10 years out of operating. Okay. So, I guess the assumption would be that they've probably tried to max that out as much as they could to, to help fund it. I, I don't know that answer. It, the deferred developer fee has to be for, it's an IRS rule and it, whatever you defer has to be paid back within the first 10 years. So I, okay. I agree. I think it should be maxed out, but it not, is not always done that way. So here's what I guess I looking at the go ahead, Jeff. No, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Jeff. Look, looking at the, I mean, they they added in the carryback note of 195. So essentially that that may, you know, end up being the same thing anyway. I guess my thought just based on that, and I'm not sure, um, it's just to go back and confirm that they've maximized um, their kind of participation in this through the developer's fee and, um, or to see if they have. And I don't, um, I guess I'm not sure I'm understanding the seller's note, but, um, and I, I guess that, Jeff, are you saying that that gets, like, if you look at their, their what skin they have in the game, it would be the developer fee plus the note? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. 
if that's kind of what they did. Maybe they've maxed out the developer fee, and so they decided to do this carry back to to help okay. make up the difference. I, I'm I'm not sure. I'm just kind of speculating there. It, it'd be nice to know that, I guess, and if yeah. we could ask that question of them. So the state did require, was the one who asked that they reflect the appraised value of the land that had been donated. So that's why they have now added that 195 back into the, um, in, or back into the, the oh. program. Um, is, that the, is that the appraised value of the land then? Mm -hmm. okay. That's their estimated appraised okay. value. They yeah. haven't had an official um, appraised okay. appraisal done yet. Okay. Um, so then they've at, so that's part of the increase in the 600 K in the, in the project costs that 195 is added in there. Would that be true? I'm sure I, I imagine it is kind of have to add that on both sides. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And then they add the uh, carry back note to make up for that portion of it. So right, right. it would ju just be nice to know about the de developer fee. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I would do is, is kind of my in inclination right now is to make sure that they've maximized as much as they can on the developer fee. And if there's more that, that they can, you know, pump into this, which would decrease our participation. Um, that's what I would like to see. Okay. So just in theory, I don't, I'm not opposed to this. If, if we can make sure that they maximize it, I think the, you know, the, the catch 22 of this is it doesn't leave much funding for anybody else for the balance of the year. Mm -hmm. And maybe it'll be a slow year and everybody's been impacted by COVID and construction mm -hmm. costs. And, you know, maybe that won't be an issue, but um, it just, uh, you know, it's going to basically empty our, you know, our bank quite a bit. Well, and Molly, maybe we can get just clarification um, from Kathy that that 350000 that we're supposed to pay out per year does come out of what we have available. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll, we'll get lucky and we have more than we think, but we, you know, it'd be nice to know. Okay. Well, I, I am in support of everything financial spoken thus far that it's not in my, in my area of expertise. So thank you all. The one question that I have just to be reminded is, the concerted effort that senior housing options will be doing for our community to um, have people of our community living in those apartments. I, mean, I, I would hope on faith that that is that the intent. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I assume that is their intention. Um, the, I guess the program never puts a, it's not a necessarily a requirement that's in for any of the funding, um, but I would think most of most of the projects have that um, serve yeah. folks who are here. Yeah, and I mean, if they need uh, to uh, collaborate and put the word out, CPWD would be more than happy to help with putting the word out. Okay, great. So my question to them will be, you know, what the get clarification on the development developer fee, and if there is anything else that of that that they could be contributing to the project, or if they are maxed out. Um, does anyone have any other questions for senior housing options? I think that's all that I had. I just, you know, um, I would really, once we ask that question, I guess on the deferred developer fee, it'd just be really good to know that um, because if we're assuming that the 540 is all we have left and we're taking the 250 out of it, that really leaves us um, with not too much for the rest of the year, which 
this is a good project and I support it. And I, I think it's good um, to have these new units in the community, um, but we just need to keep them. And that would take us down to under 200,000 for the rest of the year. Right. Yeah. And I will, I will talk with Kathy um, to get that finalized and clarified. This is something totally different. Um, I listened to the, pro, um, um, they made a presentation for the Veterans Village off, um, let's see, well. We're in Mountain Brook. Yes, yes, by Mountain Brook. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just wondering, you know, they were talking, they really, they said they have to generate a million dollars a year and they do fundraising all the time. I'm just wondering if, they would possibly step in and ask money from you all. For no, they have, they have applied for the fee reductions. So they will get fee reductions, okay. but they have indicated that they will not be applying for. Okay. For okay. Then I, we don't have to worry about that, that mm -hmm. amount. Coming. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Are there any question? It's Lori Walker again. Mm -hmm. My question would be, if we don't give this funding, what will happen to this project? Yeah, that is a good question. I can put that to them as well. Um, in talking with Danny, who is their um, consultant, she she really did stress how how much she has been, how much they have been working with all their other partners and everyone else's um, or the state, um, and they got has maxed out what they are able to put into the project as well as getting um, CDBG DR funding. Um, so she did say that if. Um, she did say if they can't get, if they do not get our funding, they have the opportunity or the ability to go back to Chaffa to get an increase in their um, tax credit amount. Um, but she said, and Lori, maybe you have more insight into this, that it that, that is frowned upon by Chaffa. And so she didn't want to put senior housing options in that position. Um, but as a worst case scenario, they could go back to Chaffa. I don't know what would happen if Chaffa is not able to, to provide any additional tax credits um, for the project. I just would hate I to did have one other question. Oh. Um, real quick, on their application, um, they talk about the, they have asked to extend the PUD to Mart, um, beyond that or am I reading that incorrectly do you know if they've asked for another extension or just through March of 2021 is where they're at right now so that was another part of the application that seemed like a carryover from the past um with the previous application so they have not asked for a PUD extension um she said that could be again something they would ask the city um planning and zoning commission whether about extending it, but as of now, they have not done that. Okay. I don't know that it would necessarily change our decision on funding. I was just curious if they had asked for that or not. Thank you. No, I, think, I think they are hoping to, to get all the funding together and they can actually start <laughs> on the project in March. I'd hate for us not to fund this with how far they've come with us speculating on possibly some other projects coming along. I mean, I'd hate for us to lose a project that's ready to go. And I, I feel they've been a good partner for Longmont. I don't, I don't really have any history with them, but I feel like they've, they've provided a good product for, for the residents that have used it and, <clears throat> I don't know. At this point, I would hate to see this project go away over this amount of funding. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
do you all want to reconvene once we have an answer from them regarding the developer, the deferred developer fee? Or um, are you just wanting to know what their, their thinking is behind that deferred developer fee? I'm a, I don't want to speak for them. I would assume they've put in as much as they are able to, but I don't know. I don't know the details, so I can't say why it's not a larger amount. So we could. So what would what would make you all feel comfortable um, making a final decision on this application? Maybe here's a way to say it: Is are we in favor of doing filling the gap between a maximized developers fee and what they're asking. So if it's 237 now, if it, if it's 250, then we, you know, I bring our piece down again, but just making us, you know, assuring that they've maximized on their developer fee and otherwise us, so it would, it would be 250 or less if, if they can put more in. And, um, and basically, I, I mean, I'm comfortable saying we'll fill the gap if they've if they've maximized the developer fee. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that as well. Me too. I am as well. I'm good with it. Yep, sounds good. All right, sorry, who was the last person who just said they were good with it? Was that you, Jennifer? Yeah, that was me. Thank you. And Diane, are you okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, Molly, Kathy is joining right now. Hi, Kathy. It might take her a minute for her stuff to hook up. Okay. <laughs> there, there, all of the loc uh, locations are different for where you mute and turn on your stuff. So it takes a while to find it. So um, we have talked through the application and um, the group has would like for more for clarification from Cinnamon Park on um, or senior housing options on whether they've maximized the amount of the deferred developer fee that they've put in to the project um, and would be okay filling the gap between that maximized or the amount of the deferred developer fee up to 250. Um, so if they are able to put in more of the developer fee than the amount of the housing, affordable housing loan would be less, but could go up to the maximum 250 that they've requested. All right. So I thought they said in their application or something that they had done that. They had changed the deferred developer fee and had maximized what they can defer. Cause I know Chaffa limits how much you can defer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we noticed it's up thirty-seven thousand, but didn't know if it, if if it was able you know, if they were able to defer more. Um, you know, it's it's evident that they've, you know, beat the bushes and come up with a bunch of other funding sources. So I, that's good. I could be confusing it, but I thought there was something. But I have to say, I didn't read it intently. <laughs> I didn't, I don't, I don't maybe it just, maybe it just said they changed the, de the developer fee to defer more. Yeah. I mean, their, their sources and use show the, the increase that they've put in it. Um, but I, I did not see in their application anything about that. Okay, so that's a question that we yes. want to ask then? Okay. Yes. 
And then there was a question on um, the funding <clears throat> available. And if, um, and I wasn't sure for the 350,000 payment that starts this year, is that coming out of the 540 you said was available? From no, it's already that's already taken out. And actually I think, I didn't get an answer back from our accounting staff, but I think, trying to find the file again, here it is. Um, I think I might've double taken out stuff because <laughs> she's showing 1.2, almost 1.3 um, available with all of the fees out, that seven that I estimated and the 350 out and what we haven't paid out so far. So I think everything's already taken out at one point, just under 1.3. So I think it's more like that, that we've got. What I'm not sure, because she added in the million that we get additional in 2021. She didn't add in, I don't think additional, the additional marijuana tax would be, which would be another 150. And she didn't add in estimated program income to come in in 2021, which is probably another 200. So that's, I think it's closer to 1.3 1 to 1.5 actually that we've got available in the affordable housing fund. When I went back and looked, I'm like, mm, I think I double took out money. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. That means there's more. Yeah. To, to give away during the year. Yes. I guess one other thing we did not talk about were the terms, and I'm comfortable with saying the same terms as 0% in 40 years. Everybody else is in agreement. I agree with that. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that as well. Does anyone have any concerns with those loan terms? No. Okay. So the, is the recommendation to add the 250 to get them to 500 then? Well, getting clarification okay. on the, so no more than 250,000. Okay. Um, but if there's any more of the deferred developer fee they put in, then we reduce the, the loan amount. Okay. Okay, any other? Good job, guys. Didn't need me here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, I will let everyone know what they say in response to our question. And perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Thank great. you. Thank you. Thanks, very everybody. Much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.